about 20 plus years ago, 24 I think, I had one of the most interesting experiences of my life, one that has stayed with me. I remember sitting in a chair discussing with my GP um, my symptoms. I was being uh, examined, I guess, or I was attempting to be examined um, to see what could be done about what turned out to be extreme depression, severe depression, uh, to the point where I couldn't walk. just all the terrible symptoms of uh, an extremely debilitating depression. And I remember talking, and it was an enormous effort to say anything, because the overwhelming sense of futility um, was so overwhelming (laughs) that I just had given up more or less before I'd started talking. Uh, I'd given up any hope of getting my point across of how dreadful it all was. Um, Feelings wash through you in that state that defy description. Futility, horror, um, doom, um, just terrible things. And you're trying to talk to somebody that you suspect doesn't feel the same way as you do, and you understand just how pointless it is to try and communicate it. You don't you don't really sort of, or at least I wasn't at the time, uh, thinking along the lines of this is a medical practitioner and all he really needs is to get some sense as to what is wrong with me that, say, distinguishes my feelings from, or my state from, say, a schizophrenic or uh, uh, someone with another type of mental disorder. Um, and I was actually attempting to explain how I felt. And as I say, the overwhelming sense that I had of listening to my own voice, of being some sort of a omniscient observer to a monologue, I guess, that I was having with the doctor, was, oh, why bother? There's just, words simply don't exist to explain this. And they don't. To this day, they do not exist to explain the intensity and the horror and the futility and the gloom and the uh, just general fog and debilitation and prostration of a severe depression. Um, The language is simply not up to the task of explaining that. Now that is more or less proof positive in my books that some things, some very, I guess, real things or some very serious things at least defy language. You cannot describe them accurately. There is no way to do it. (laughs) Um, And these are serious issues that need to be addressed in our um, in our lives. Uh, And it's not just bad stuff. Um, Good stuff. Uh, Poetry, for example, Um, You're using words almost to sort of go beyond words. You're using words to invoke the intuitive. Uh, If you just um, read off a poem in a certain tone of voice, it means something completely different if you try and put some expressiveness into it. Um, Music. How are you going to sort of talk about Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, Fourth Movement? Just, okay, explain that to me, what that is. (laughs) No, it's not going to happen. Now, I often equate atheism with scientism, and scientism attempts to explain things that can't really be explained in language. It attempts to explain states, say, of consciousness which cannot be explained, they have to be experienced. Um, It attempts to explain certain phenomena that can't really be explained, or at least attempts to explain them with tools that are by, by their very nature inadequate, not up to the job. So in a sense, it's One of the arguments that I do have with the issue of labels, and especially labeling in terms of atheist, is the baggage that comes with it, not because there's anything inherent in the term itself, but the baggage that comes with it uh, through the normal atheist culture, the atheist discourse. And one of them is um, this sort of scientism. Um, Not everything can be explained scientific, and the intuitive is simply defies scientism at every turn. Science can explain certain things, but it 
or it can explain them in a certain way, but only in terms that it has set for itself. It can only describe things within the boundaries that science is, itself has set. Um, we've discovered, or we, uh, the human race or scientists have discovered drugs that can, or treatments that can deal with people who have severe depression. But that doesn't mean that they can tell us anything about what the experience of depression is. Um, and I think that scientism, uh, which is something of a pejorative, and I don't really n mean it to be pejorative because <laughs> the term scientism itself has baggage attached to it, massive baggage, which is exactly the sort of thing that I'm trying to avoid. But um, scientism has, uh, or at least what I believe to be uh, scientism, has baggage attached to it uh, that is so overwhelming, at least in my perception of the word, that um, I can't really subscribe to it. And scientism, in my mind at least, in my mental association, seems um, hopelessly interwoven with atheist or atheism the atheist discourse or atheism or the uh, atheist meme subculture whatever you want to call it too many assumptions built in there and too many assumptions that simply limit our uh, knowledge of things uh, to a crippling extent so it's not so much that I have issues with atheism or even I suppose at the end of the day with scientism it's not that I think that they're wrong it's that I think that they are hopelessly um, and fatally limited. Thank you.